بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس دا فور دا ایپیسوڈ ریلیٹنگ دا ڈیتھ پینلٹی ان اسلام ان دس ایپیسوڈ وی ول ڈسکس دا سکولز آف شریع لا ہاؤ مینی سکول ہاؤ مینی اوپینینز وی ہیو ان اسلام اینڈ دا سیکنڈ تھنگ وی ول ڈسکس اسلام ایٹ دا فنڈامنٹل رائٹس ٹو لائف لیٹ اے اسٹارٹ موسٹ آف what is now known as sharia law referred to generally as fiqh islamic fiqh understanding can be defined as a, a jurist's understanding or interpretation of the primary sources of islamic law or islamic sharia in islam that are the quran and the sunnah in order to derive the laws The Sharia law has been a site of tension between the various schools of legal theory. There are a number of schools of legal theory in Islam that will be referenced in this talking in this episode. However, I will only confine myself Uh, to the five prominent schools of law. They are uh, the Hanafi school of law, Maliki school of law, Shafi school of law, Hanbali school of law, and the Jafri school of law. I don't want to discuss all of them because they, there are so many books have been written about the Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, uh, Imam Jafar, Ridwan Allah Ta'ala al-Majma'een. One of the great uh, uh, debates among all schools of jurisprudence today is whether the Quran and the Sunnah are to be interpreted literally or on the basis of of the intent and the purpose of the text or both. This debate impacts on the application of the death penalty as well. Because we have only two basic things which is Quran and Hadith. The death penalty application, death penalty, the death penalty applicable in Sharia law are not always clearly stated in the Quran. In some circumstances, fiqh, interpretation of the primary sources of law in Islam has been used to interpret what punishments should be applied in Islam for certain offenses. raising some serious questions of doubt over their legitimacy under Sharia law, which will be further analyzed in uh, coming episodes, I mean, uh, coming discourses. Now, first we will see uh, uh, the fundamental right of life in Islam. how Islam sees the human being and human life. As early mentioned, one of the five indispensable in Islam, indispensable in Islam, is the protection of life, human being. Protection of life is a one of the fundamental thing in Islam. This is recognized in the Quran, in Sunnah, Ahadith, literature, and the other key Islamic texts. According to Islam, man is the central uh, creature, makhluk, ashraful makhlukat, and the ultimate purpose of the creation. Effectively, man is God's vicegerent on earth, a viceroy, his khalifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Your Lord said to the angels, I am appointing a vicegerent on earth, Khalifa. 
Surah Bakra, ayat number 30. This responsibility and function as a God's vicegerent, Khalifa, so Muslims believe that makes this, this responsibility makes human beings as a degree higher than angels in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashraful makhlukat. Although the Quran accords human beings with the title of God's Viceroy, God's Khalifa on earth, it denies them the license to take any human life. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a human being Khalifa, Viceroy on this earth, but that does not mean he has an authority he has given any kind of privilege to take a life of a human being. The privileges only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islamic teachings describe the act of giving life and taking life it away as exclusively God's privilege, Allah's privilege. Whom he wish, he can give the life of whom he wishes he can take him away from this land. Thus the term life and death signify actions by the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that human, be human beings are not allowed to emulate. Because, Quran is saying, because of that we decreed upon the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption in the land, it is as if he had slain whole humanity, whole mankind. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. The geographical and cultural landscape of the 7th century of Arabia in which the Quran and the religion of Islam emerged was a very violent and hostile one marked by endless uh, tribal blood and feuds, blood cabals. Indeed, one of the noble uh, traits greatly valued in pre-Islamic society was the Hums, steadfastness in seeking revenge. Thus within such a violent and lawful context, the Quran permitted the taking of a life only by way of justice, justice and law as a major for preventing cycles of violation. With the emergence of the new religion of Islam, life could only be taken if it had been explicitly sanctioned and specified under the Sharia and not merely as part of a bullet feuds. Allah is saying, take not life which God has made sacred except by way of justice and law, thus does, thus does he command you so that you may learn wisdom. Surah uh, Maida, ayat number 151. In most Muslim countries, therefore, the death penalty can be applied by courts as punishment for the most serious crimes as set in the Sharia law. Inshallah, we will discuss in next episode the categories of the uh, different crimes, what kind of crimes they are and how Islam is dealing and Islamic Sharia is uh, dealing all those, the crimes. Inshallah, in next episode, we will see.